Well, hey, everybody, it's me again, Peter Coffin. We sure have been talking a lot recently, haven't we? A lot of discourse flying around. Mm. So I'm not making a third video on the plagiarism thing. If you want to know my opinion on plagiarism, go back to my previous two videos. I've covered every angle that I care to in short form. If you consider 15 to 20 minutes short form anyway. I don't know. Maybe you don't. Now, what I want to do today specifically is to talk about the whole individualism collectivism argument. Now, I don't just want to talk about the left here. I want to talk about the right as well. I don't normally talk about the right as much because I kind of think the right is a little more transparent about what it's saying. And I think when people spend a bunch of time debunking right wing ideas, it's kind of like explaining why people don't enjoy sauerkraut like we know what sauerkraut is. It's not for, actually, it's not a very good example. I kind of like sauerkraut, but like, I get why people don't, right? It's straightforward. It's a, it's a good example. I'm gonna stick with this example, like the bodyguard in that movie, The Bodyguard. Still, the thing about right wing and left wing that I think people don't understand as much, and this is coming from somebody who considers themselves neither. I don't affiliate with the right. I don't affiliate with the left. I don't like either of those things. I think they are both wings of the current system. I specifically advocate for progressing to a higher stage of production and thus arguing over things that ultimately kind of just aid capitalism. It's not my bag, baby. Oh, finally, those capitalist pigs will pay for their crimes, eh? Eh? Eh, comrades, eh? But people get this dichotomy wrong. They say right equals individualist and left equals collectivist. And I'm here to argue that firstly, both mostly are individualist. And secondly, both are collectivist when it's time to dispose of uh, a baddie. And no, I don't mean a massive conglomeration of capital doing wrong in the world that we the people's only recourse against is to band together and exert our collective power against. No, no, no. I hope it's clear that when I say the baddies, I mean individuals that what is ultimately a consumer movement has deemed um, unacceptable, which is, by the way, individualism. It's the basis of my criticism of H-Bomb's video on plagiarism. And it's really important to start seeing things beyond individualism. Now, again, there's a lot of people who see the dichotomy between left and right as left equals collectivist, right equals individualist. And I want to go ahead and demonstrate how that's nonsense. And the discussion that has come out of that and is really needed is how we as YouTube video essayists and people who enjoy video essayists in the YouTube sphere, especially in, you know, more progressive leaning and try to be accepting spaces, try to hold ourselves accountable in terms of how we talk about other people's ideas and try to create ideas together and not plagiarize from other people. I mean, plagiarism is a really important deal for numerous reasons that H-Bomber guy got into. And if we, you know, speaking as video essayists, want to consider ourselves as people doing professional work, important work, or, Im or important in the sense that we're trying to have like intellectual conversations about really important issues and trying to, you know, inspire thoughts in others, we need to be holding ourselves to a certain standard. And that's something that I myself, you know, want to hold myself accountable to. And I think that's a really necessary conversation. So the thing I noticed the most here is the word accountability. It comes up twice here, holding myself accountable, holding each other accountable, blah, blah, blah. And this is how the left is individualist. They don't want to hold companies accountable. They want to hold themselves and others in the community accountable. And I'm sure that this person's response to that statement would probably be, no, I want to hold both accountable. But the fact is the vast majority of effort goes into holding individuals accountable. It's not something that's even exercised along class lines. When you go after another creator, you're going after another independent contractor making stuff for a huge entity that benefits off of it much more than they will ever benefit off of it, even if they benefit off of it a lot. And it is how people who supposedly stand up for progressive movements um, end up harming many others because it becomes about this lack of willing to listen to community and lack of willingness to be held accountable when you screw up. I, and I try to listen and hold myself accountable to it and try to learn and grow from it. 
And I think that's really, really necessary. And there is a whole lot of talk about holding people accountable in this video. This is without question an individualist viewpoint. But it's not just accountability that's very individualist about this. Jesse Gender makes it about herself. This whole James Somerton and community solidarity issue, it is an opportunity for her to talk about her experiences. And I'm not going to say that that's wrong, because it's not. Just to be completely clear, I am not saying it's bad that she's doing this. I'm saying it's an example of how individualist the left is, as much as the right. But I want to touch upon an issue that related to myself when uh, I had interactions with James Somerton about a year ago that led to its own very public drama as well. And I think most importantly, being willing to hear when you fucked up, to listen to criticism. I have made no bones about the fact that I have fucked up things in the past in my videos that, you know, people have come to me behind the scenes um, and said, that's kind of messed up. And I'm like, oh. I, and I try to listen and hold myself accountable to it and try to learn and grow from it. And, and I want to emphasize it's really not wrong to talk about your own experiences and how something affects you. But that seems to be the extent of what Jesse Gender wants to say. Well, that and eventually talking about how individualism is bad. But I think also it sort of speaks to this idea that we have in our society of this great man myth. Our society likes to put this like idea of individuals and great man myths uh, upon us all. That we are these, we are supposed to be these like arbiters of issues and become like these standard bearers of society, the the heroes of the hero's journey. And I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but that's exactly what you're doing here. And that doesn't make you bad or evil or anything, but it does make you not understand the thing that you're criticizing. But it comes more out of this idea of not being willing to see yourself as the bad person, not being willing to take criticism, and also not being in community with other people. And that goes back to the idea of how our society tries to make us individualists. And that's really why I, I end up focusing on the left a lot more than the right. If I have a criticism for the individualism of the right, it's that they're full of shit. They absolutely believe in community and collectivism. Like, what is the church? At its best, it is community and collectivism. What is the Boy and Girl Scouts of America? At their best, they are community and collectivism. What is the family? At its best, it is community and collectivism. The right is completely full of shit. But so is the left. And I want to take another opportunity to dichotomize myself with this leftist mode. If Jesse Gender sees this video, she'll most likely think that what I'm saying is that she's a baddie and that she needs to be disposed of. And that's not what I'm saying. I am saying she is an example of something. And again, just like with the plagiarism, she is the example of another set of incentives and rewards. Incentives and rewards that are set by capital, by the class that owns. Leftism is a set of ideologies that ultimately don't question that in any meaningful way. Leftism started in the French Revolution. It was the guys that said to the feudalists, the monarchists, we should have capitalism. And as much as people want to say, no, the left is progressivism, the left is progress, I disagree. The left is still people saying we should have capitalism. It's just they're saying we should have social progress within it. And I don't entirely disagree with the latter part of that statement, but I entirely disagree with the former part of it. We should not have capitalism. And while social progress is an admirable goal, I don't believe that meaningful social progress will continue to happen under capitalism. I don't think that plagiarism will stop under capitalism. I don't think that individualism, uh, great man theory, the main character syndrome that so many have, I don't think that's going to stop under capitalism. These are all modes that come from justifying ideologies of capitalism, of which I want to say that I believe progressivism, leftism, um, is one, or actually a bunch of, a cluster of them. And on my most recent 
very important documentary, Mark is for Sale. In the credits, I listed my next three documentary projects. I have no idea how long they're going to take to complete. I'm on the self-help one right now. But horseshoe theory is one that I want to make. I've been wrong about that in the past. Horseshoe theory is correct. It's just that the horseshoe extends from one end of capitalist justifying ideology to another. And you're not bad if you justify capitalism. I know a lot of people who are not anti-capitalist who I consider very good people. I just consider them wrong about a thing. And to be clear, that's what I'm saying about Jesse Gender here whom I don't know shit about beyond this video. And it took me a long time to get here, but the dichotomy I want to draw between what I'm doing here, which is using Jesse Gender as an example of what I'm talking about, versus H-Bomb, who pointed out a bunch of baddies to go after. And not just in his video, but also his producer created that Reddit thread, which is essentially a naughty and nice list. That's individualism. The only collectivist element of this is that they start pooling their power together to exert on their fellow subordinate class individuals. And it's easy to go after a fellow subordinate class individual versus capital because capital is in control. I get it. People say, well, your solutions all require a fucking violent revolution. We don't know that. I'm not a left adventurist. I'm not here advocating to burn it all down. I'm advocating that the mode of production needs to change. And I would like for that to not involve a bunch of people dying, actually. I don't know if that's how it will happen. I can't. But that's what I'm getting at here. You can't know the future and all of the details, you can know the actual problem. And the actual problem with plagiarism is not some guy decided to plagiarize. It's not some guy doesn't have the right morals. It's not some guy is harming other people by taking the benefits that they could have had from them. Those are all effects, not causes, okay? Those are downstream. They come from incentives and rewards set by capital, as do most of the actions people are talking about. It would be meaningless for people to plagiarize if it wasn't such an immediately benefiting action to take. And that goes for issue after issue. I don't want to make this about plagiarism. I want you to understand that that stands for issue after issue after issue. The displacement of reward is only a harm because of how we do rewards. For one to benefit, another doesn't actually have to be harmed. That's not how things have to be. There is a mathematical flaw that prevents that from happening, and that mathematical flaw is the center of capitalism. It's what happens when you have a conflict in the mode of production and appropriation. The socialized production with the private slash feudal mode of appropriation of product and profit. This creates a situation in which the subordinate class cannot buy back the product that it creates. Thus, these leftists, the reason they think that instead of bringing everybody up, we should bring like the capitalists down is that it's a beneficial ideology that has been given to them by capital because it's not possible. You can't just take everything the capitalists have. It's not going to work. They're happy to have the left believe that uh, Robin Hood is the ideal because what that ultimately means is the left doesn't understand what the real problem is. And when the left becomes frustrated because they can't Robin Hood the capitalists, they'll start Robin Hooding each other. And just to wrap this up, I think that it's important to say that individualism itself is not bad. And collectivism is not automatically good either. Further, situationally, individualism and collectivism both have their place. A large part of my self-help documentary is about how self-help isn't evil, like automatically speaking anyhow. It's good 
to want to improve yourself. It's good to want to better your own life situation. Those things are good things, and they're purely individualistic things. It's just that when that individualist mode of critique takes precedence over any systemic mode of critique, and it absolutely has on issue after issue after issue within all of the quote-unquote popular leftists, that's where individualism is a massive detriment. And I think that's all I have to say. I appreciate your time. Like, comment, subscribe, all that crap. Um, I hope you have a nice day.